developing our first TensorFlow model. In this section, we're gonna make our first TensorFlow model in order to learn the basic operations of this library. The goal will be creating a model able to predict a nonlinear function that has two parameters. We can think that we are trying to create a model that can predict the melting point of an alloy like steel, and the parameters can be the amount of iron and carbon to make the steel. This is how the function looks like. But in real life, when scientists measure something directly from nature, it comes with noise, so I will also add noise to the function. Here I define the vectors that will contain the data, the data with some noise, and the results. I also define the parameters that I will use, and I fill here those vectors. The first step is to decide the number of hidden layers our model will have. In our case, I will make it more complicated than I should on purpose, so that our prediction will fluctuate. The model will consist of 8 hidden layers with the following hidden nodes. We now have to define the variables that will contain our weights and biases. Both weights and biases will be stored in a dictionary in which every element is a TensorFlow variable. Weights will be initialized to random values and biases will be initialized with zeros. As we can see, we have to specify the shape as well. Now we're going to create the graph, and the first thing we have to do is to specify the placeholders where our input will be transformed into tensors. Remember we write none because we don't know how many rows of data the model will be fed with. We now create the layers of our model. All of them will first multiply the input data by the weights, and then will sum the bias. Afterwards, a sigmoid function will transform the data. We do this all the way until we define all the layers. At the very end, we will just get the final prediction, and in this case we don't use a sigmoid function because then we would only get values between zeros and ones. The cost is calculated by subtracting the differences between our prediction and the expected output, and then we sum the result. For the optimizer, we will use Adam, with a learning rate of 0 0.01, and we also have to specify that it will minimize the cost function. Now we will proceed to run the model. First we have to create a session, and we initialize all the variables that we just created, otherwise we cannot use them. We generate the training, testing, and validation datasets, splitting the data in 70, 20, and 10% using the function I defined before. We train our model using the dataset a number of times, this is what we call epoch. So if we use 10 epochs, the model will see the same data 10 times. The training data is divided into batches. Optimization algorithms based on a stochastic gradient descent use this batch to calculate the gradient. If the batch size is very small, let's say 1, the gradient will be calculated using only one sample, being computationally non-efficient and very very noisy. We grab the input and the expected output, and the reason why I reshape the output is because the model expects a tensor of size none and one. And remember that this is we write none because this is the number of rows of data. Finally, we run the model. We always have to specify the optimizer in order to train the model, and I will also get the cost. Since I want to use the optimizer, I write here an underscore. We also have to specify the variables that contain the placeholders and the input arrays. So remember this y and this x over here, they are the placeholders, and x row and y row is the data we just got here. Now we will test the dataset. Now we don't need to run the optimizer because we finished learning, so we will grab the variables that contain tensor corresponding to our predictions and then insert the input. So this one over here called pred is the, the prediction, right? Then we have to calculate the errors as the differences between our predictions and the expected output. One error, this one over here, is regarding to the train to the training function, the one that has noisy. That's why I call it error noisy. And the other error is regarding to the real function I want to predict. Now I just iterate over the whole dataset, gathering the result. This is just for visualization purposes, since I'm also predicting using the training dataset. Then we print the average error calculated before. Finally, we plot the function we want to learn, the noisy data, and the results of our predictions on the whole dataset. So we just save it, then we run it. It takes a few seconds to train and learn. And then we will get here the, the two errors we just printed. And this is how the function will look like. So in red color we have the network output, and as we can see it's going to be very similar to both the noisy data and the real data, the function we actually want to predict.